Joining me now for this discussion, CNN political commentator Alice Stewart and CNN political commentator Keisha Lance Bottoms, former mayor of Atlanta. Great to see you both, lady, ladies. Mayor, I'm going to start with you. In the conversations you're having with fellow Democrats, do you sense there's an opening here to work with Republicans, taking even just moderate steps to prevent future shootings, even if it's not exactly what Democrats ultimately want? I do think there is an opening, and my sense is that everyone recognizes that there will have to be compromise on both sides. And we know that previously the Senate has passed an assault weapons ban uh, in 1994. That was passed by then Senator Joe Biden. Um, I would be very surprised if we get that far this time. Uh, but I think everyone recognizes that the country is calling for even the smallest steps of improvement in this area, whether it be in background checks um, or, or other areas that, can, that we can agree on. And I think it's important to signal to the American people that Congress is willing to work together on this important issue. And Alice, there is still plenty of Second Amendment um, posturing in your party. Let's listen to what Congressman Dan Crenshaw had to say about any attempt to expand red flag laws. We, we are essentially trying to do with the red flag law is enforce the law before the law has been broken. And that's a really difficult thing to do. It's difficult to assess whether somebody is a threat. Now, if there's, if there's such a threat that they're threatening somebody with a weapon already, well, then they've already broken the law, so why do you need this other law? Is most of the party with Crenshaw on this, even though Texas Senator John Cornyn is openly working with Democrats on bipartisan gun legislation, and this is obviously a key thing that lawmakers are looking at? Uh, most of the party is in the uh, understanding that we're in a new era, in a new time, and we need to make new changes. And I'm encouraged that we had uh, Mitch McConnell uh, encourage uh, Senator Cornyn to take the lead on this issue, and Cornyn saying we're in a new sense of urgency that we've never had before, and, and they do want to see change. I, I'm reminded of, of a very compelling statement that Mayor Bottom said uh, last year when there was a mass shooting in Atlanta, and she said, when there is a crime against a community, there is a crime against us all. We are all in this terrible sense of, of grieving and pain. And the Republicans I'm talking to, they are saying, yes, we need to come to the table. There are uh, discussions being made, emails that are being distributed, conversations that are being had by members of the GOP. They're not in session right now, so uh, nothing can happen in, until they're back in session. But they are having these conversations. But they're looking at this not as much about a gun control issue, but a gun violence in issue, and recognizing this is a complicated problem that needs comprehensive uh, solutions. And they're looking at uh, certain aspects of gun control, but more than anything, looking at uh, the component also in this mental health, behavioral health, uh, open doors at schools, making schools safe, and also law enforcement training. So they're willing to negotiate, but there also needs to be a compromise on, on both sides to, to really have change. And we're going to go back to what exactly um, gun control measures could be on the table. But I want to ask you, Keisha, what are the issues that Democrats are most flexible about? And do you really think this time is different? Because we've seen this over and over again, where these horrible mass shootings happen, Republicans and Democrats talk, and there's, you know, and then the time passes and the attention goes elsewhere. And so nothing happens. Do you, do you think this time is different? I do believe this time is different, and the, the country is fatigued. We just had a mass shooting in Buffalo. We just saw a mass shooting in Chattanooga yesterday evening, and it's become almost a daily occurrence. And when you have children involved, um, it, it takes it to a completely different level of resolve to get something done. And it, it, this, is, this is the moment that leaders are elected for, to make difficult decisions. So it's difficult to speculate on what will be compromised on, but I think the American people have to also understand many of these negotiations will not happen in public. They will happen behind closed doors, as is sometimes appropriate with complicated issues. And, and I am very optimistic that something positive will come from this awful tragedy. Um, Alice, I want to go to you on this. We have a listing of all the mass shootings that were carried out with legally purchased guns. Several of the recent mass shootings we've seen were from people under the age of 21 buying AR-15s and then engaging in a mass shooting. Where could Republicans be most flexible? 
Uh, th there are many areas that they have uh, already agreed in private that they're willing to look at. Uh, expanding background checks, making sure there is an integrated system with the, the, the uh, mental health uh, community as well as the law enforcement community and there is shared intelligence uh, with, with people that are selling guns and making sure that there are background checks done at, at certainly at gun stores as well as uh, gun uh, shows. That's an uh, important component of this. Uh, but also looking at there have been uh, already in some states these red flag laws that I support I think that is a good first step some are concerned about this being federal uh, a federal law but more at the state level uh, also looking at banning bump stops bump stocks I think is important and and looking more closely at the sales of AR-15s to people that are uh, younger 18 years old 19 or 20 these are all issues that could have a, a, an impact and could make a difference and most Republicans that I've talked to, virtually everyone, says they're willing to have these conversations uh, because enough is enough and this is the time right. that they realize we need to make a change. On raising the age limit, it's interesting because as you all know, there's a federal law that says you can't buy a handgun until you're 21, but that's not the case with AR-15s, these assault style rifles. Um, and Dan Crenshaw was on def basically saying, look, it becomes a slippery slope if you then raise the age to 21, you know, um, are you going to raise it then when a 22 year old engages in a shooting? What would you say to him very quickly, Keisha? Yeah, I, I, I would just remind people that as it relates to assault of weapons, that if the assault weapon ban had been in place, then the shooter would not have had access to that weapon. It's important to note because they are weapons of, of for, to kill uh, in the way that uh, this gunman carried out uh, the killing of these innocent children and teachers. All right, I will thank just you so say, much. I will just say, just, Go ahead, Pamela, just quickly. real quickly, I, I, I do believe uh, if a madman wants to get his hands on a gun and commit such a tragic uh, incident, uh, unfortunately they will do so. What we need to do is make sure that we can uh, to take every step that we possibly can to make sure that the madmen don't get guns, but law-abiding citizens have access to, to their Second Amendment right to bear arms. But it's hard, too, when you look at all the guns, more than 400 million in this country, more guns than people. But and this is a complicated issue. This conversation will continue. Thank you, Alice and Keisha. We'll be right back.